This video has been supported by PCBWay. Hello everyone. Today we are going to take a closer look at a module that I have been wanting for my case for quite a while. The output module. Because one of the problems that I have been facing is that my Mackie mixer and my audio interfaces can't deal with the mighty output levels of the Eurorack. The output module takes care of this issue and provides the needed gain reduction to match the line level inputs of my recording gear. But let's start by looking at the signal levels that we are dealing with and what we need to do. The dope for A100 specification says that audio signals produced by sound sources should typically be in the range of 10 volt peak to peak, centered around 0 volt. That converts to 3.536 volt RMS for a pure sine wave. The nominal input level for professional equipment is plus 4 dBU, which converts into 1.228 volt RMS. Now, the professional line levels shouldn't be confused with consumer line levels, which is used by hi-fi equipment. This level is minus 10 dBV, which is only 0.3 volt RMS. So watch out for that if you consider to connect your Eurorack directly to a hi-fi set. Okay. That's a lot of numbers and dBs. So, what does the output module do? In its simplest form, it's just a voltage divider consisting of two resistors or one potentiometer, if you want to be able to adjust the gain to trim the level a bit. But I will make a slightly more involved design featuring balanced output drivers, a powerful headphone amplifier, and a simple LED bar graph view meter. It should be said that most professional audio equipment have gain trimmers or pad buttons on the inputs, which reduces the input gain. So some people claim that Eurorack output modules are not needed at all. But I want to have my audio inputs calibrated to plus 4 dBU and my Mackie mixer only has a pad function on the first four channels. So for me it's more convenient to adjust the levels on the output side to make sure that I don't run into problems when I move connections around. So where do we start when designing a module like this? A great source for a project like this is the book Small Signal Audio Design by Douglas Self. Basically all the building blocks that I need are explained in great detail with examples. For someone designing audio equipment this book is a must have and I can really recommend it. The design of the headphones amplifier and the volume control have been greatly inspired by the NEXT headphone amplifier featured on Phil's Lab YouTube channel. But let's jump into the schematic diagram and look at the different building blocks and how they are interconnected. On the first page we have the main building blocks that make up the design and I have also added the input and output jacks and the board to board connectors. The first block in the signal chain is the pre-gain stage, which is actually a buffer stage with some negative gain, and a first order low pass filter and a DC blocker. Next the signal is routed to the gain trimmer block and the headphone amplifier. The headphone amplifier also incorporates a backsandal volume control, which uses a linear dual ganged pot to provide a logarithmic control of the output level to the headphone amplifier itself. The headphone amplifier consists of an array of NE5532s that are connected in parallel to provide high output drive capacity, low distortion and noise. And we are going to need that output capacity because it's designed to drive studio headphones. The gain trimmer block also includes the same backsandal volume control and the output from that is routed to the VU meter and to the balanced line driver outputs. The VU meter is a design that is basically taken directly from Douglas Self's book, but with a couple of minor modifications. It's not a calibrated high precision VU meter, but it will make it easy to keep an eye on the levels that you're sending from your Eurorack to your outboard mixer or audio interface. The final block is the balanced output driver, which is just a buffer stage that provides the output signal and an inverted output of the same signal. The PCB design were made using KiCad, and I decided to divide the design into two PCBs, which are interconnected using 2.54mm header pins and sockets. I used a plugin for KiCad called KiKit for generating two separate Gerber files for each of the PCBs. KiKit is written in Python and is executed from the command line. KiKit can also be used for generating panels with multiple PCBs. So, after fitting everything together, it was time to generate the Gerber files and send them for manufacturing. And this takes us to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Thank you for supporting this project.
I used the PCBWay manufacturing plugin in KiCad to upload the files, which is very convenient. However, I made a small mistake in one of the Gerber files, and the production engineers at PCBWay immediately saw that and got back to me asking for clarification. I could fix the problem quickly and upload the corrected Gerbers, and the production resumed right away. I decided to go for matte black finish on the PCBs, and when I got the PCBs a couple of days later, they looked absolutely gorgeous. I started to assemble the boards right away, and it was clear to me that I needed some kind of spacer between the PCBs to get the height right. So, instead of stacking regular washers on top of each other, I designed a small standoff using FreeCAD. For those of you that don't know FreeCAD, it's an open source free software that works fine for simple designs, which uh, suits me perfect. Okay, so after designing the standoff, I could export it to an STL file to my 3D printer and print it. Speaking of 3D printing, I made a quick mock-up of the front panel also, so I could check the dimensions and that the controls were in the right places. I always do this before I make the final PCB panel. Okay, with everything put together, it was time to verify the design and everything worked just fine. I only needed to adjust a couple of values to trim the levels for the view meter. Next step was to design the PCB panel, and after finalizing the artwork, I sent that to PCB way for manufacturing as well. This time I selected gloss black finish, which lo also looked awesome. Alright, so let's put this module together, and I will give you a short demo of how it works. Let's start with a headphones amplifier and the volume control. The output jack is a 3.5mm type and most studio headphones support both 6.3mm and 3.5mm jacks. The amplifier is designed to drive headphones with up to 250 ohm impedance, like these Bayer Dynamics. It is of course possible to use headphones with lower impedance, for example these AKGs that has 55 ohm. Next we have the actual output signal chain that starts with the gain trimmer. This is where you can adjust the output levels from your URAC. The LED view meter will show an average of the signal and you should set the levels so the green LEDs are on and the yellow LED are flickering, but the red LEDs should be off. The outputs are balanced, which means that we need to connect it using a 6.3mm TRS jack and cables that have three leads, ground, hot and cold signal leads. The balanced line levels will provide better signal to noise ratio than regular unbalanced connections, which is great if you want to hook up your modular to someone else's equipment, for example a live sound system. So, this is basically it. We have reached the end of this video. The design is available on my GitHub as usual, and you can also buy the PCBs directly from PCBWay. Links in the description. Again, big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.